What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beard's Garage. On today's episode, we're finally gonna be able to ride the gravy bones. So we've done a ton of upgrades to this chassis and I'm super pumped to try them all out. We did rack and pinion steering. We did that steering quickener from Speedway. So the steering is absolutely amazing. Like on asphalt, normally these push rod top suspension or steering is really tight to steer when you're just sitting still. And this was uh, that exact thing. It was super hard to steer unless you was moving. So now with that steering rack and quickener, the thing steers like butter and it has a super fast responsive steering setup. Also, it's gonna be super exciting to use this hydraulic e-brake. And now that we have front disc brakes, we have the whole kit and caboodle. This thing is gonna be awesome. And with that 780 CVT on it with the uh, inboard ran driven pulley, this thing's gonna be awesome. So we're gonna slap our new three quarter inch jack shaft. Go Power Sports got that thing to us. So we're gonna unbox it, get it put in there, get the 440 that we're gonna be running today put on and just make sure everything's buttoned out and go to ride this thing. So let's get into it. Okay, we got this engine. We got this engine. This is a engine we've had sitting on the shelf. It's got a 308 cam, rod, flywheel, no head work done, and I think it has champion rockers. So nothing crazy, but it's gonna be a huge game from a stock engine to go on gravy bones. Uh, people a million times ask me what oil I use. Oil, I pronounce it oil. But uh, this is Dominator Racing Oil from Amazon, Amsel. <laughs> A lot of hard words and uh, this is what I use after I break in uh, when I build an engine I use break-in oil from them this stuff is awesome because it has high zinc you don't have to buy the additive and add to it it already has it the racing oil also has uh, a higher level of zinc and stuff in it uh, but so we use break-in on a break-in we run this through the first two oil changes just to fully break in the engine and I run them about I don't know eight the first one I do about five hours. The second oil change is about 10 hours. Third and then on is uh, 20 hours. But when I'm building it, I also use their assembly loop. I'm telling you, we're all AMS oil family. My wife cooks with it, cooking, <laughs> AMS oil cooking oil, synthetic. But I'm gonna put, I think this is a little over a quart, like a quart and an eighth of a quart. So I'm gonna pour this entire bottle in and then add a little bit more. I'm gonna grab a funnel. And while I'm putting the, uh, the nectar of the gods in here, uh, we will be having a meetup at Turkey Bay in December. You can go to rbgcarts.com slash events to find out information. We would absolutely love to see you there. We're going to be giving away a, the most giveaways I think we've ever done at a meetup. Giving away engines, uh, blaster products, benchmark abrasives. Uh, what else? Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is throwing in tools and a half inch impact, brushless impact and uh, we just got a ton of stuff I, i'm i'm sure i'm forgetting mud stuff. skipper mud skippers uh is going to be throwing in some stuff um, so we have a lot of stuff we really hope to see you there it's in kentucky it's an amazing place you can ride a mini bike with no suspension if you want back problems later <laughs> you can ride a freaking yard cart if you want to uh, i mean it's the best trails we've ever found 90 percent of our meetups are probably going to be here from now on because I just love it, unless we find some results, of course. But uh, we possibly could have gravy bones there to show it off, and we would love to see you there. We're gonna be giving away a ridiculous amount of stuff. You get entered to win free just by being there. But you can also buy extra entries if you wanna you know, gamble a little bit. But um, yeah, you don't have to buy nothing to enter to win. Everybody's name is, you get one, uh, one ticket per person of your family. So I didn't know what Amazon was all about, and started messing with a dealer he's a great guy we got links in our video description and then after reading people's testimonies of amsoil and just seeing the technology and the time they put in their oil it's it's amazing i'm only using amsoil it is more expensive than other oils but um it's one of those things you don't have to do it oil changes as often and you're just going to save money in the long run so i think it's worth buying the more premium oil you know knowing you got quality juices especially with this not having filters and stuff i would much rather uh i always put these a little full by the way so it's about to pour out then i tilt them forward and put the lid on just to have you don't have any magnetic sticks not for this one i normally keep the magnetic uh drain plugs you can buy on amazon in our links 
Uh, almost, I think every single vehicle we have has one on it. And they do capture a ton of like sediment and junk out of these engines because they do break in for a while. So highly recommend the magnetic plug too. But links for all this stuff is always down below. It does help us out. Let's take this hoss over to the go cart. Don't throw your back out. Don't you tell me what to do. <laughs> These engines aren't bad. I think they're like 75 pounds, maybe 80. Dang, damn. Back at it again with the white band. So for this particular build, I had to measure what belt size, and I went with a Gates Sportline 6312. So this is the perfect size belt. I think it's 40 bucks, and this thing will last forever. On this thing like literally i shouldn't ever have to replace a belt on this this vehicle so i don't have my engine i'm hoping this is the right size belt by the way i checked it you said you measured i did but i'm an idiot so never can tell what that means soon after so fast forward a little bit you can see the setup with the chain now that's of course not ideal but it's going to work great in our application uh, the chain is a little tight right now like it's pretty good and tight but the problem with these chains is they normally stretch one to two times so we wanted to make sure we made it a little tighter than normal uh so there's an idler pulley everything is or idler sprocket everything's on there i am going to have to clean this car because this duramax has been sitting on the shelf for a while and again it i can't remember what rockers it has in it but i know it's a 308 cam rod and a flywheel and the 34 millimeter Makuni from Go Power Sport. So this whole kit is linked down below as well as the Duro Max 440 cc engine. Uh, we've said a million times, I would highly recommend using this engine if you want a big block because you got a bigger bore, same quality as a Predator and stuff. We've had like great, uh, great luck out of them. We've never blown one up. Awesome engine. So the, I did weld in a piece of angle iron right there to use an existing gas tank. Uh, which is actually this one. So I TIG welded a bung on here because the bottom bung is actually blocked off by the angle iron. And I wanted to mount it like this just because it's super quick and I'm ready to ride this thing. So these gas tanks are from Brad Hill. You can get him on uh, Facebook. I will leave a link in the video description uh, or his email to email him about these gas tanks. He can build them any size, any shape. Uh, awesome guy. We actually got our meal, our big bridge port right there from Brad Hill. Okay, so we got the exhaust put on, throttle cable hooked up. The only thing we haven't done is a kill switch. I'm gonna run just a real quick mini box style kill switch for later. So I'm gonna use some blaster starting fluid. Uh, links to blaster is always in our video description. We love them, they work great, uh, but we're gonna do a first start. Now the system isn't primed uh, because this has this pulse pump. So we're gonna have to pull it over a couple times. So I'm gonna use starting fluid to help uh, boost that up. What an idiot! few moments later okay so we got everything done i don't think i forgot to tighten anything up let's hope not anyways so kill switch is on first
that no suspension is not the best. Tire brakes out. Oh yeah. That's like extreme. Like this is a way different machine already. Steering is awesome. Oh, that made this thing so much better. Uh, uh, someone commented and said I should put some guards on the tie rods so my calf set on them, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So we was almost successful. Like we beat on it quite a bit. Maybe the chain loosened some. I'm not sure. So check it out. <laughs> oh, I see what happened. I was supposed to put a lock nut on the back of this. Uh, this was just a bolt going through and I didn't. Other than that, it was working great. Great. Now we gotta find that. Where it, boy? Where it, boy? That thing is, holy crap is that. I love it. I didn't expect it to be that good. Nope. So the sprocket was there. The other bearing is right there. So, I actually have the nuts in my pocket to put this back on. Uh, well, of course, I'm going to need some tools. But, let's see. It might have chewed up the bolt. It looks like it did. Yeah, it ate up the threads there. So, I'm going to go cut this off or probably just grab a new bolt real quick. And I have some lock nuts to do jam nuts on the back of it. So I think it failed and this thing was freaking awesome before it did. Okay, so I found the spacer that I machined and everything. We put a lock nut on it down there, which it was supposed to have in the beginning. So let's see. Please no kick back.
this thing sick. I'm telling you, this is the like, I'm so comfortable on this thing. And I do want it to have more power. Like it has plenty of power, but it needs to rev out further. I think some head porting will really open it up. And uh, I'm gonna do some ratio rock. Well, we're doing the supercharging and it's sitting up there on the table. But so I gotta do some stuff like everything has a lock nut, but this. Because when I test, I mean, I, get, I thought it did, but I guess not. Um, so I need to put that in there, tighten this down, go over everything. And uh, then we need to see what Lonnie thinks of it. This thing is so freaking awesome. Tell you guys, I am absolutely in love with this chassis. I mean, let's face it. If it had suspension, it'd be a million times better, even if it was just a few inches of travel to take the hard hits out. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're not going to mess with this one. We're going to fine tune some stuff. Uh, this was kind of a dumb move putting that at such an angle because the reservoir is kind of in your arm. You have to, you feel like you're reaching over it. So I'm actually going to cut that entire plate off and drop that back down like four inches. Leave the handle in the exact spot. I like where the handle's at. It's just how that master cylinder is kicked up in the rear like that. Uh, it feels like it's, you know, you got to reach, kind of kick your elbow up over it. But other than that, the thing handles awesome. Uh, I think the carb needs tuned out a little bit. It wasn't spitting or anything. It just, the engine ain't really revving way out there like it, it has the possibility to. And also we'll do some head work uh, well, we're doing the supercharged engine on this neck, so uh, we'll make one more video ripping on this thing. I'll get Lonnie on it. I'll get a few people's reactions that never really have experienced go-karts, and uh, we'll see what they think of it, and then it goes to powder coat. So what the plans are is I'm going to build the exact same chassis, like the, the floor plan is going to be the same, and I'm going to build an ultra small set of front A arms and then rear trailing arms for it. Uh, so we're going to do independent all the way around on this thing and only give it like you know four to six inches of suspension travel uh, so it still sets low you're just taking out the mean bump so you can just haul across the field that's my plans with this and you can take it on light trails that's what i want to do i want to take it through some trails at turkey bay so hopefully before our meetup i can knock out one of these chassis with full suspension and to see if i want to offer that when we do our frames over the winter time so uh let me know what you think about this cart. I'm absolutely in love with it. I can't wait to do that supercharged engine. It's going to make so much more power than this one. Because this one's probably a little over 20 horsepower. Nothing crazy, but I mean, it's spinning constantly. I don't know if you guys can tell, but literally in the field, it does nonstop spinning. Probably ran about 50, 55 on the road, uh, something around that, but with the gearing ratio that's set up on. But uh, massive shout out to Go Power Sports for all the parts that's used on this cart wheels and tires i just think the thing looks awesome it's sick uh, all the links are in the video description and uh, we hope to see you at our meetup in december it would be amazing if y'all came a uh, high chance of winning something if you come because we got all kinds of stuff we're going to try to have some welders and everything there it's going to be the biggest giveaway we've ever done for sure and you don't have to spend a dime if you don't want to and you still get entered to win um so yeah guys let me know what you think about gravy bones we're gonna get lonnie on this thing i'm gonna get one of my other buddies let some people we'll film some people's reactions of experience and a big boy go-kart you know with steel and go-kart style engine on it and see what they think so thank you guys so much for watching we love you and god bless